Agency in Motion Continuing Education Series for agents, producers, advisors, and agency builders in the financial services industry. And today's episode really concentrates on creating a winning formula, meaning the communication strategies that are going to drive you to success. That's what today's episode is all about. We're going to go over the things that I think are important in that winning formula, in that equation, what's important to know, and then really how to deliver it to the marketplace. Remember, you guys, that you have a personal plan. So we're talking about a winning formula and a communication strategy. This is about helping people on the outside market get what they want and also help fuel what you want. For your personal vision, what you're trying to accomplish, it all just reverse engineers back to that personal plan, which means that you as an advisor, agent, producer, whatever you consider yourself, financial coach, you need 12 to 15 appointments per week. Now, if you look at that number, it's not working you into an early grade, but you need to understand out of those 12 to 15 appointments per week, what exactly is an appointment? It's not just a random conversation with a random person and having a random outcome, which is probably nothing that you want or need. An appointment is actually someone with a reason to do something. It really doesn't matter. On the partner, the client side, you can look at both sides of the fence. But if you're having 12 to 15 appointments per week, and each one of those appointments is with somebody who has a reason to do something, this is going to fuel your business. So that's what we're trying to set up. And the communication strategies are all designed to lead you down a path to have these appointments with qualified personas each week. Now, a common misconception real quick is, you know, if I'm not doing the education, if I'm not doing the sales, I'm just doing the marketing, this doesn't pertain to me. Well, it definitely does because as an appointment setter, you have to get this many appointments on an educator's calendar because once again, if there's no input value coming in, there can't be any output value or yield on the backside. So it doesn't matter where you are. And, you know, if you're working a virtual assembly line with other people who are helping you out, You've got to be able to manufacture this for yourself, manufacture it for other people to get the engine of growth going for your business. And we always compare it to this analogy, and it's pretty simple to understand. If I open a savings account, I put money in my savings account, I go to make a withdrawal, it's there. If I open a savings account, I make no deposits, and I go to make a withdrawal, I can't get upset that the bank's not going to give me any money, right? Pretty easy to understand. It works the same way, like we were just talking about. You have to have some input value on the front side if you're going to build your business. The input value comes from exactly what we're discussing today, which is communication. And once you understand communication, what's the winning formula? What are the strategies that are going to help me drive success in communications that are going to lead me to the appointments and lead me to the growth of my business, but also the growth and influence of my mission, which is to help people you know, give them a chance not to survive, but uh, thrive in this financial environment. You've got two ways to communicate. And this is really, really, really important. We've gone through this before to understand the differences in these two things. Marketing is more of a direct communication. And, you know, that could be paid marketing, you know, it could be organic marketing, but it's more of a direct communication. Networking is more of an indirect communication. Both of these are effective and you need both of them for a winning strategy in terms of creating that winning formula for communication. But you need to understand the differences and then work on perfecting your game at both of these. I find networking something that I like to do a lot more than marketing. So most of my marketing comes from paid advertisements that I'm doing. The networking that I'm doing is just talking to people. And once again, it's really, really easy, the communication strategies, if you learn how not to be so self-absorbed of what you're doing. Be curious, ask questions. And those questions can come, and we've kind of compared this to a blind date before. If you're out there talking to people, don't just overwhelm the conversation with me, 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 my business. It's all about, hey, what do you do? How long have you been doing it? What do you like? You know, How's business? You got any big goals or projects that you're working on? And how's your business holding up? Or how's your job holding up in this new financial environment? There are tons of questions that you can ask. You find ones that you like, continue to ask them over and over again. What does that do? Well, we talked about this before. If you actually show interest in other people, it's going to build interest in what you do because at the right time, depending on the answers to those questions, 
you're going to be able to identify a problem and then usher in a solution and an action step to that. It's a very, you know, defined framework. It's an art form that you guys have to learn. And sometimes those questions can be reflective questions. So sometimes they're just like conversation openers, getting to know somebody. Sometimes it's reflective questions. So these are great questions to ask somebody. Hey, I'm a financial coach, financial advisor. If you don't mind me asking, I'm just curious. You could give yourself financial advice 10 years ago. What would you tell yourself? And let them talk, guys. It's going to be the same. Thing. I would have bought this stock. I would have done this. Well, now we've what? We've got them talking. We've got them reflecting. And then what happens? Well, guess what? You know, I personally, you know, we, none of us can do anything about the regrets of the past. That's in the rear view mirror, right? So what we're doing is we're bringing these up to help them identify and understand that can't do anything about the past, but we can make different choices today, good choices today, so that those regrets don't start to pile up tomorrow. So if you get 10 years in the future and you have that same question, there are far less regrets financially that you have, you know, will bring up. And then the other thing is to look in the future. You know, you can look in the past with regrets or you can look into the future because this is going to help you guys identify where a particular partner or a client prospect really is because this is going to identify, do they have goals? Are they worried? Do they have an idea where they're actually trying to get to? So once again, depending on what the answers are here, you can interject yourself at the right place at the right time with the right information that's going to help them understand how you can get them to a desired endpoint or how you can get them away from something that they're trying to avoid. So remember, questions can be simple. Questions can be reflective. Questions can be forward thinking, but it's all designed just to get them talking. If you get the other side talking, you are winning the communication strategy because all you're going to do at some point in there is connect the dots. Hey, based on what you're telling me, you're trying to accomplish this. You're really afraid of this. Uh, you would be life changing if this happened. Connect the dots, show them how to get there and what they need to do and how you fit into that overall picture. If you do this successfully, then your business is going to start to boom. You're going to have an affluent business. You're going to have a lot of people in different cycles of communication. You're going to stop doing what's a real big error on the front side, which is putting too much value on the leads that you generate. Lead generation is very important, but each one of those leads that you generate doesn't have so much value unless you're not creating enough of them. When you're connecting the dots, you just become you know, in a position where you are sorting people. It's a lot easier to sort people than try to you know, sell people, recruit people, pitch people. You're just outlining, once again, what you hear in that conversation. In the conversation, you're not writing down you know, pages and pages of notes, you're writing down those key items. Wants this, wants to avoid this, would really like this. Um, you know, those are the things. And then you're highlighting those. How are you going to help somebody get what they want or avoid getting where they don't want to get to? Remember, the um, power of possibility is enormously powerful in your communication. So when you're talking to people, when you're talking about creating that winning formula, the communication strategies that are going to drive success, you need to learn how to ask questions, get people talking, interject yourself at the right point. But you need to understand there's two main factors in the power of possibility. Number one is you, your clients, your partners, your prospects, everybody needs to be aware of possibilities. And then number two, they need to start living their life with possibilities and potential. Remember, having a plan of action, having an execution of that plan, getting us somewhere we want to go is one thing drifting, having no plan, going somewhere, it's the unknown. It's not going to be anywhere that anybody wants to get to. So understand how to open conversations, continue conversations, and then finally direct conversations where you need them to go. Remember, it's not these big altering, you know, huge life changes. It's about the cumulative effect of our little choices, not doing this, doing more of this, whether those are negative or positive, it's going to have that bigger negative or positive impact, depending on what those are. So when you're talking to people, people fear money. And when you're talking to them, you have to help them understand small changes in what they do, unlocking the power of their money, not getting ripped off by the banks. These are all small changes. And the cumulative effect of those changes uh, can be very, very, very powerful for your clients. One of the things that we teach and one of the things that you have to help the other side understand is when somebody says, hey, I'm not saving for retirement, I'm not accumulating assets, I don't have any money. 
well, why don't you have any money? Why are you not paying yourself? Do you understand the high cost of waiting? And then that can be reverse engineered down where the reason you're not paying yourself is in our model, the first thing we identify is how much of your net income goes to debt and then how much of that income that is going to service the debt is actually paying off the debt and how much is going just to the bank in interest or profit. That's robbing them of their opportunity. So remember, in your communication, if you help people identify why they're not getting what they want and how to get what they want, depending on what that is, these things really start to flow as far as the cycles of communication. And then once again, you're not pitching, selling, recruiting. You are sorting people. This person wants to be helped. I can help them. This person doesn't want to be helped. This person doesn't have the resources to be helped right now. We talk about discipline equals dollars and a lot of our you know, framework for what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. But another way to look at this, another way to explain it to potential prospects that you want to turn into clients is your dollars have to be disciplined. If your dollars aren't disciplined, if they're unfit um, and they're just out there and you're not really even sure what's happening with your money, you can be taken advantage of. And that's what we always talk about. Everything's systematically stacked in the favor of the financial institution. Your dollars have to be disciplined. The more dollars that you can be disciplined in your financial plan, the better they can attract more money into your financial plan and the freedoms that you're looking for, the time, lifestyle, and financial freedom. Another communication strategy for the winning formula is you have to learn that, yes, we are all emotional creatures. We talk about this in our online trainings for things like homeowners and business owners and things. Yes, we're all emotional creatures and we get that. But we have to start making data-driven decisions with our money. And once again, if you can help people understand on the front side how you can help them, you know, interject in that position where you can help them coach them with superior education, superior technology to help them make more data-driven decisions with their money and what that actually means as far as an end outcome, then once again, these, uh, these conversations become a lot easier. You need to learn how to do two main things in your business. Remember, you're in a contact business. So you need to A, learn how to start the conversation. And then B, you need to learn how to advance into the art of communication and conversation. Remember, it's not about me. It's about them. And you're going to build interest in what you do by showing interest in other people. And we talked about earlier in this episode of this training that it's all about asking questions, whether it's just simple questions, to open conversations, whether it's reflective uh, questions that get them really thinking about, you know, the past, the future, and how to create something they actually want. You know, starting the conversation, the art of conversation, it all really comes back to two things. What is your persona? It's going to help you a whole lot, guys, if you have a persona of who you're actually targeting and then once you develop that persona, you continuously learn about that and you develop communication strategies based on what is the most, uh, what is the best message to that persona? What's the best message to this people that I'm trying to bring into my partner or client side? Once again, a defined persona with a defined message is going to resonate with that persona really gets the engine of growth going for your business. Part of the communication strategy is you need to raise awareness, awareness of what's going on and the awareness of what can be with the proper plan of action, execution, coaching, whatever it is, you know, the key points that you're deciding to, you know, focus on at that particular time. Part of your communication strategy also has to be done or also has to accomplish in a way that's not off putting to the other side. Most people don't know how money works. Most people are financially illiterate, so you can't approach them from that standpoint. You have to approach them with helping them understand, hey, none of this was taught in schools. Most of us have the wrong information. So we're going to debunk a myth, and that creates a gap. And you're going to fill that gap with a factual alternative. Remember, we're not selling. We're leading people into buying decisions based on education and them being able to achieve their goals. Best way to correct the wrong information is to provide the right information. Pretty simple. So we're going to open people's eyes and open people's minds to what's really happening and the alternatives they can take to, once again, put themselves at the head of the table instead of traditionally what's been accepted by so many, which is not putting themselves at the head of the table, putting the bank, putting the financial institutions, putting Wall Street at the head of the table. And then we're also, you know, getting the word out. You know, our main message to the population is, hey, 
this is how you get ahead. This is how you do it. This is how, first of all, you understand what's going on. You reverse that cycle. You plug that drain. You, uh, you know, create something that puts you at the head of the table. It's not just about surviving during, you know, good or bad economic times, because those are all cycles. We can't do anything about that. No matter what the economic cycle is, we're teaching our clients to not just survive, but thrive. And you can also, in your communication strategy, really benefit yourself and your message and your business growth by understanding and being able to clearly, concisely, articulately um, tell people why your organization does what it does. You know, what we do is timely, valuable, it's needed. Package that up in a way because most people, especially the younger crowds, are going to buy into your mission, buy into your why before they ever buy into anything else that you're trying to uh, you know, give them, whether it's free education, you know, free guys, it doesn't matter. They're gonna buy into your mission, your why first. Understanding that the message is important, it's timely, it's valuable, it's needed because everybody has a choice. Being a sucker is a choice. Not being a sucker is also a choice. So you know, we don't get to choose whether or not we participate in the money game we get to choose how we play and how we play is going to end up, you know, with a determining factor of whether we win or lose this money game. Your communication strategy also needs to incorporate the fact that, you know, I believe the American dream is still alive and well. It's still a game. The rules of the game have slightly changed. So once again, if I'm talking to somebody on the front side and they don't believe there's any way to accomplish the American dream in today's society, that's not a qualified person on my persona. It's not who I'm looking to work with. So Understand going back to the persona, understanding who you're trying to talk to, why, and what that end outcome is going to lead to in that persona comes to the fact that, you know, this is what most people have today. Too much debt, not enough wealth. Unfortunately, that is either a conscious or an unconscious or subconscious choice by, made by people. So what we try to teach them is, Hey, the rest of society is struggling. If you want to be with the herd inside that herd mentality and get the end results of the herd, that's fine. Unfortunately, that's the best plan of action for you. But we can take you down another route. It's called debt to wealth. Whatever your message is to the marketplace, you need to help them understand how you are the person not providing just a solution, but you are the person providing the solution that works best. This is how you increase the full your pipeline. We've used this so many times, but this is in a very, very important pyramid because the rapport, trust, and credibility can be accomplished in a number of different ways. Online material, when people look you up, the material that you're leading with. But once that's accomplished, however that's accomplished, somebody feels comfortable enough to give you the information, what we were just talking about, getting them talking because... If they're talking 70% of the time on the front side, you're talking 30%, that's a good ratio because in that information, it's going to uncover a problem. That problem now will lead you to you know, uncovering the solution, the action step. If you manufacture this pyramid and you reverse engineer all this, dissect it backwards, components of this pyramid equal mastery. You get good at this pyramid, you get good at increasing the flow of your pipeline, and then you're not getting so emotional about the end outcomes, understanding that you have a factory like pipeline in place with a communication strategy that's going to lead and drive you to success. When you are communicating with people, there's two sides of it. You know, what motivates your audience? There's the pleasure of feeling good and there's the avoidance of pain. So it's the carrot versus the stick. And, you know, most of the time, avoiding pain is a stronger motivating factor. But once again, don't be, you know, don't come in prejudging situations. Let those questions, let that communication, let those conversations uncover how best you think it is. Some people need the carrot. Some people need the stick. Understand that it's not going to be 100% of the time, you know, either way. That's going to come from the communication that you have. And then at some point, somebody wants something. Somebody desires something. Somebody would be life-changing if this happened. Or somebody doesn't want something. Somebody really wants to avoid something. At some point, you're going to interject yourself in the conversation. You're going to start to negotiate. You get what you negotiate. So starting a conversation, 
and then the art of communication, and then finally on the backside, the art of negotiation. That's really the winning formula. That's the communication strategy that's going to drive success. Learning the art of opening conversation, starting that conversation, and then within that con uh, conversation, the art of you know opening, continuing, directing, the finally negotiations. Negotiating with the prospect to help them understand how they can get what they want by taking the next action step. Whatever that call to action is, that's the final step right there, guys. And then the key tips in your communications is, especially if you're in the money game, people fear money. So always, always, always anticipate the resistance on the front side. So your job is to get your prospect talking. Once again, that's the most important thing on the front side about their goals, about their problems, what they want, what they don't want. And then your job is to sell the appointment, sell the education, not the product or the service. This is very important because once again, if you start to preemptively overcome some of these and you create excitement, you know, this is what this is all about. Knowing that you have something that can help your persona, knowing that you have a developed a message that's going to resonate with the crowd. The last thing that you've got to do is you got to bring some excitement because nobody's going to buy into you or your ability to help them unless you're excited about that. Real simple, guys. Where are they now? Where do they want to go? How are they going to get there? What are they willing to do to get there? And how do you fit into the plan? That's the five points. That's really what you're trying to accomplish in communication. Figure out where they are now, where they're trying to get to, how are they going to get there? Number four is an important one. Are they really willing to do what's necessary to get there? And then finally, if they are, how do you fit in that plan? Get them talking about goals. And sometimes getting them talking about non-financial goals um, is the best way. Hey, what are your goals? What motivates you? And then tie in the financial goals. How will they help you obtain those primary goals? Because remember, financial fitness, financial wellness, financial freedom also comes with lifestyle and time freedom. That's going to help them uncover other areas of their life they want to explore. What are the strengths and weaknesses? You know, when do they want to achieve the goals? How much time, energy, uh, resources are they willing to dedicate? And then making it real. So part of your communication strategies has to be, hey, you know, if we're going to do this, let me ask you, what stops you in the past? How will hitting your goals change your life? And then once again, if this is going to be life changing, what are you willing to do to make it real and make it sure that we get it done? Part of the communication strategy also is helping people understand that this isn't just an open door policy. We're not just accepting everybody in because we invest time, energy, resources into our clients. So we have expectations. And part of the disqualification process or qualifying them is to help them understand, hey, this is what we do. This is how we're going to help you. But if we put time, energy, and resources into you, we have expectations. This is what we expect of our clients, of our partners. Can you fall in line? Can you do this stuff? Because if they can, great. If they can't, it's a disqualifier. Also, your communication strategy. I help people understand without them asking, hey, why would somebody not be successful working with you, working with this plan of action, working through this conversion process? Well, having no financial plan. Remember, if somebody doesn't have a destination goal or a dream, they don't know what that is. They don't need us. They don't need our help not understanding the risk in the financial plan, breaking the rules of your financial plan for X, Y, or Z, the inability to act, react, or adjust to a changing environment, falling in love with mediocrity, failure to realize that it's really up to you, failure to learn from past mistakes and no consistency. So I'll preemptively come and say, hey, this is why you know the people that small percentage of people that have not been successful with me, this is what I mainly see is the issues and problems. Remember, the best defense is a good offense. So preemptively in your communication, if you're working with a defined persona, you're going to get to learn a lot about that persona, uh, their fears, their dreams, what their problems or issues are. And you can preemptively go into the marketplace and conversations, overcoming those before they ever come up. Remember, it doesn't matter whether it's one minute, 10 minutes, three hours, three meetings, when it's time to move on and you've disqualified it, don't hold on to prospects. You're wasting their time. You're wasting your own time. It's a disservice to both parties. So part of the communication strategy and the winning formula is understanding that doesn't matter when, when it's disqualified, when it's time to move on, that we actually 
adhere and we uh and we accept that. Does somebody have a plan in place? And this is once again, going back to talking them through, are they willing to do what's necessary to get what they want? Because this isn't just about having a wish. You know, everybody can make a wish. A goal without a plan is just a wish. So are we wishing for something to happen? Are we putting together a plan of action and execution? Because I don't want to work with people who wish. I want to work with people who have a plan of action and execution that I can help, you know, get through that plan and get to that desired endpoint. Think about this for a minute, guys. Why would you be working with somebody who doesn't have a game plan, who doesn't know what they're trying to accomplish? Think about it in a sports analogy. If, you know, it's at the beginning of the game and they were interviewing both head coaches and one head coach is going through, you know, what's their game plan, what they're going to try to do, how they're going to attack, how they're going to stop the other uh, side. And then the other coach says, we really don't have a game plan. We're just going to see what happens. First of all, you'd probably be betting heavily against the coach that doesn't have a game plan. Same thing with your prospects. We are coaching them, but if they don't have anything they're trying to accomplish. They have no game plan. They don't care about the end outcome. That's disqualification. People are on the move and money is on the move. You need to understand how to effectively communicate with both the people and the money that's on the move. And then finally today, we're going to end this. We know we talked a lot about the client side. It works on the partner side as well. The first thing that you have to decide in your communication strategies is on the partner side, if you're doing agency build out, you know, what is your primary motivation in recruiting? Are you recruiting to sell people products or, or are you recruiting to help with what you're trying to accomplish? This is why I recruit guys, people that are going to help me with the mission, help me with the national distribution model. I'm looking for dedicated distribution partners. Through that process, you know, sometimes recruiting itself can be very, very exciting. You know, one partner can have explosive growth, but many times in recruiting, what you guys are going to experience is that it's a very, you know, it's a hard thing to do. It's a very defeating experience, but you can't get too high. You can't get too low. Understanding that the right people, once again, if I have a partner persona, I'm going out with a certain message into that persona. You know, the people that I attract, I should get better and better and better at what I do. But it can be a frustrating experience, you know, dealing with getting excited about a partner, bringing them in and having them do absolutely nothing. Once again, you can't control anything, but you can control the communication strategy on the front side, the disqualification, the qualification process of new partners to make sure the people you're bringing in are qualified and they have the uh, framework that you guys set up of the expectation of a new partner. What makes a partner successful? What will make a partner not successful? The more of those things that you can get out of the way earlier on in the conversations will help you on the end because you're not putting so many time, energy, resources into people who really don't deserve it. At the end of the day, guys, the communication strategy, the winning formula is about understanding value the value that your education brings, the value that your technology brings, the value that your coaching brings to the table. What's it worth? What is an end outcome worth to your prospects? That's what you need to center the conversation on. And remember, from a partner perspective, there's going to be a value point. There's going to be disruption of what, what we do, whether it's a virtual business um, you know, or whatever the value disruption is in there. We're creating powerful digital franchises in the financial industry, in the money business, you know, this is an opportunity to allow somebody to work from home, living their dream lifestyle. But also, once again, one of the things I really look for in partners is mission-based. Do they understand the need to bring financial literacy, to bring financial wellness, to bring financial freedom to as many people as we can influence? Because if they are aligned with that mission, it's going to be far easier for them to get past that learning curve, get past that initial hump and be a productive you know, a contributing partner to your business. Agency in motion, building, operating, and managing agencies in the digital environment.